My brother Jude 134 shared with me a video that left me speechless. I was going to watch it this weekend, but due to the car issues and other things like that, I couldn't get to it. But I'm just going to play the video so that you can see and witness what's happening within churches today. Forgive us of every sin, Hallelujah. sins of omission, sins of commission in the name of Jesus. Every chain can be broken. Every shackle can be broken. You're part of the family of God. God, we ask and we believe for your healing power and grace to touch his body and make him whole. Just by here, say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Forgive me for my sins. Forgive me for my sins. I believe in my heart. I believe in my heart. That Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ. Died for my sins. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. I'm saved. I'm saved. My name is Bishop Ron Gibson. I'm Bishop Clarence E. McClendon. My name is Dietrich Haddon. I'm Wayne Cheney. My name is Jay Hazlip. My name is Noel Jones. The Bible says that I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. I believe that. P. Diddy, Jay-Z, they're not the only ones who should be driving Ferraris and living in large houses. The Bible says that those who sow among us should reap from us. And that's implying that the preacher is to be taken care of. I like being successful. Security is a necessary part of what we do. Being a pastor is very dangerous because you have to be perfect at all times. People put you up on a pedestal that you can't live on. Pastors are people just like everybody else. It's all about truth for me from this point on. The truth about my baby out of wedlock, the truth about my divorce, it happened. There's nothing I can do about that. I'm a pastor, but at the end of the day, I'm a man. Does it ever get to a place where it's really not about love, but it's about winning? Winning what? Winning a, a man or a relationship? No, winning me. I, winning me. You're not a prize. I am a prize. <laughs> That's right. Maybe I don't love you as much as you love me. Maybe you don't. And maybe I don't love you as much as you think I love you. I'm trying my best to balance it all. And just when you think you have it managed, let's get through this, man. If we plan on having more children, I want to be married. We have more than you a re relationship like I'm your part of your, your congregation. I'm not. Don't pastor me. Isaiah 56, 11. Yeah, there are greedy dogs which can never have enough. And there are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way, every one for his gain from his quarter. Do you know what's happening within a lot of churches? And this is sad because the media, these networks, they know what they're doing. They're trying to make those that are true believers in Jesus Christ look like they're money-hungry, pathetic individuals who do not want to live for Jesus Christ. And what they do is they pick these individuals who are willing to sign up for this type of garbage to make a fool of Jesus Christ. But make no mistake about it. All it takes is for a person to open up the scriptures to see that none of what these men are saying is in scripture. You have this bishop saying that P. Diddy, Jay-Z, that they're not the only ones who should be driving Ferraris. Well, the word of God says in 1 Corinthians 11, 1, Be ye followers of me, even I also am of Christ. We are supposed to be followers of Jesus Christ, following the way of Jesus Christ. Not of Jay-Z, not of P. Diddy. You hear these men arguing with their wives like that in public, calling themselves bishop, apostle, this, that, and the other. When 1 Timothy 3.2 says a bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, Vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach. And they get on camera and they say, I'm a real man. People put me up on a pedestal, but I'm your real man. Well, 
If you want to be a real man, laying up with all different types of women, getting divorced, getting other women pregnant, then don't call yourself a bishop, don't call yourself a pastor, and stop using the I'm a real man card. Because the scriptures tell us how to find if a person is a true man or woman of God. And the scriptures tell us how to find out if a person's a true pastor or not. It says husband of one wife. And if you can see very clearly, this individual, I believe his name is Dietrich Haddon. He left his wife, divorced his wife, and now found another woman and has that woman pregnant and had a baby. And the woman in the video itself is telling him, she's telling him we need to get married. And he doesn't want to get married. Wants to just keep on having babies without being married. So you see, we all make mistakes. We all make mistakes. You make mistakes. I make mistakes. But the difference is that when you make a mistake, you repent. And you start living holy for Jesus Christ. If you stumble, you repent and you move forward. You don't make excuses for it. But Dietrich Haddon when confronted with what he did to his wife. Look at what he says. Yes, she was born out of wedlock, talking about the baby, which is absolutely wrong for any man in my shoes. But I must say, if it wasn't for that child and her mother, the negative headlines about Dietrich Haddon would have been more devastating than anything. The enemy's agenda in 2012 wasn't to give me a bad name, but he wanted to take me out. So now it's the devil's fault. It's the devil's fault. Happens a lot within the church. Anytime you do something you shouldn't do, it's the devil. So it was the devil that caused him to divorce. It was the devil that had him get another woman pregnant. It's all the devil. You see, don't get me wrong. Satan tempts you. Satan is a deceiver. Yes, but the difference is that a true believer when he falls in his sins, he just simply admits it and stops making excuses. He simply says, I believe, I repent, and I move forward. Yes, I was deceived, but there is no excuses before the Lord. I am a sinner. I need a holy Savior. And you move forward. But with these men, you don't see this. With these men, you don't see the biblical lifestyle that shall follow a believer. As 1 Timothy 3, 2 says, of good behavior. Being on these types of TV shows, this is not good behavior. I'm preaching to the crowd here. Most of you already know this, but you're bound to witness comments below this video at some point in time that are going to say that I'm jealous and that I'm picking on people. But listen, the truth will set you free. The truth will set you free. You have the, this bishop, I believe his name is McClendon. McClendon says that in the Garden of Eden, it wasn't a story of man not listening to God in obedience. It was a story of tithe. That the tree of good and evil represented the tithe. That God told man not to touch the tree of good and evil, the tithe essentially. And when man touched the tree of good and evil, that's when he fell. And he's basically telling people, that if you touch, that if you touch your tithe, you're cursed this under This tree, in the midst of this garden, is mine. The other, every other tree, is yours. Look at your neighbor and say, get the principle. Get the principle. Principle is, this is mine. That's yours. Leave mine alone, and yours will be blessed. Leave mine alone, and you can do whatever you need to do with the rest of it. It's blessed, it's yours. But the moment you touch mine, the curse goes into effect. Are you still here? Nudge your neighbor and say, principle. Look at your neighbor and say, that's the tithe. Principle. These are the types of deceptions that people need to understand that is happening within the church. And if we don't speak out on this, people will be deceived. But sadly, at this stage in 2013, if you're deceived by the prosperity gospel, it's your own fault. 
Because you have the scriptures. You have tons of brothers and sisters preaching the truth. You have people consistently trying to wake you up and tell you that that is a lie, deception. But the problem is that a lot of people that follow the prosperity gospel don't read the scriptures. If they would, they would know that it's time to believe and repent. Revelations 3, 18-19 I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white garment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thy eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous therefore and repent. God is instructing us to buy of His gold tried in the fire. Because the financial systems of this world are corrupt. You came into this world naked. And if you've believed and repented in Jesus Christ, you're leaving with salvation. But if you've put your trust upon this earth, and you've put your trust upon the things that can rust and burn, you're in trouble. You are in trouble. These pastors telling you that if you don't tithe, you're on their curse. Yet they haven't worked a day in their life probably. And all they do all day long is milk the church for money. But listen to me, they cannot deceive God. And I just pray for them to come to the truth of Jesus before it's too late. And pray for all of the people that are following these men. That they may also believe and repent. Because Jesus is coming. May God bless you family and pray for all of these pastors. Well so called pastors. To believe and to repent. Because as you can see. The status of the church within the United States of America. Is pretty bad. God bless.